Hi everybody, my name is Jen. Welcome to our yin practice today. I am taking a little bit of a risk uh, filming outside with the dogs and God knows what else will happen in the yard behind me. Um, let's just see what happens. It was too nice of a day to go and record this in my basement. So I thought, you know, I'll show you where um, I'm set up outside and maybe it will inspire you to do the same thing and hopefully uh, your dogs will behave too. This is Leela behind me. I have a feeling she will be uh, interacting with us the whole time whether I want her to or not. So bear with me if we get some other interesting outside uh, sights or sounds as we move through this practice today. So if you've never tried yin before, it is a very calming practice and I really kept feeling drawn to share a hips practice first because the hip area is traditionally where we store a lot of emotional junk. I've always said it's like the junk drawer, you know, of all the stuff that you say like, I can't feel this right now, uh, and you just sort of brush it under the rug. Um, the under the rug is your hip area. So you might find that you're having a lot of discomfort in the low back, um, maybe some tightness in the hips, restless leg, something like that. Um, a lot of it relates to how we store these traumatic emotions in the body. And it all happens uh, and gets stored really in the fascia. If you saw the video that um, I've posted previously about like how and why traumatic memories get stored in the body, you know, at the time, at the moment, I won't go into it too deep, but your hippocampus that acts like that filing cabinet of like, where do I store this memory? It needs to shut down because your alarm center, your amygdala is so on point. And because the memories are getting stored in a way that's not traditional for the brain to recognize, it ends up getting stored in the body and in particular in the fascia. And if you think of, you know, uh, what fascia is, uh, beneath the skin there are you know of course all of our muscular systems in the body are wrapped in kind of like a saran wrap if there's a simple way to think about it and that fascia either holds everything super super tight or you're kind of able to sink into it sometimes like in a practice like this and get some fluidity of movement so when you practice a yin style yoga class which is adaptable for everyone and I will show different pose variations um, as we go along and in addition if you are in a wheelchair or if you are in a bed I'm going to do a separate video to help support you move through this same exact practice um, when you are doing that you're creating this ability for you to have that fluidity of movement. You're giving yourself more space. Have you ever seen somebody who's like super super muscular but they kind of can't move maybe the way they want to because their muscles are just bursting at the seams. The fascia is just so super tight. It doesn't allow that fluidity. So that's what it helps us do. And as we, you know, start to get still and really breathe into the spaces where you feel all that tightness, suddenly you'll find some release and letting go. And, you know, this can be an emotional practice. You might get into a position, hold that position for a particular length of time, resolve to remain as still as possible, and then all of a sudden you're having a particular memory flood your mind and you're like, where is this coming from? Why am I thinking about something from when I was a kid? Or why am I crying right now? I didn't think I was even sad. It's just this emotional traumatic memory junk that we hold on to that through a practice like this gets the opportunity to work its way to the surface and we can let go of it. Trust me, it's a really nice practice. Um, it gets really deep into the spaces where we have the most uh, issue. In particular, when we're in a time like this, where we're in this repeated stress environment, this pandemic thing is kind of new for us, unfortunately, so we're just trying to wrap our heads around it every day. If you've been having this wild roller coaster of emotions, I mean, I have too. I think we've all been in the same boat. This is absolutely a great practice for that because when you're in a constant loop of a sympathetic nervous system response, 
some things are happening physically in the body and then of course emotionally. In particular, your psoas, um, and maybe I'll post a separate picture of that, um, which is like one of your, your main hip flexors, it tightens the more you're in this sympathetic response. So over time, prolonged, extensive stress, nurses, doctors, police officers, fire, everybody, dispatchers, all of you guys right now, your psoas is shortening. And it's it kind of wraps around, I mean, I'll just post a picture, it'll be easier. Um, but it's, as it shortens, it starts to affect the low back. Thanks, Leela. And as it affects the low back, then suddenly it's affecting your hips. And then maybe you're having knee pain. And then that pain travels down the leg, like every single thing is connected. So a practice like this helps to open that up. Are you just going to stand there? <laughs> OK, so let's just get started. Who knows how long Leela is going to behave with us? She is a wine runner. Well, you don't have to sit, but just sort of move. OK. So some, some props you might need um, today. I have a strap here. This is an extra long one. It's about 10 feet long. Um, it might even be 12. Uh, you don't need to have a special strap for anything. You might just grab um, a belt or, um, you know, I don't know, your, the thing that ties around your waist with, with your robe, your, like the tie from your robe. Um, something simple like that. We're going to use that to open up the legs in a little bit. I have two blocks. Now, you don't have to have blocks, but if you do, great. If you don't, um, you can use blankets. So I have some of these, these are my favorite, um, little um, blankets that you can roll up to create uh, something firm to sit on, and also something that allows you to have this angle. So right now, like I'm sitting a little bit forward on a block, and it's this blanket can do the same exact thing, where it's rolled larger here, it's flatter here. So if you sit here, and your um, legs are coming out this way, you're giving yourself that action. You just want your hips to be a little bit higher than your knees. It helps to uh, give you a better alignment and um, also helps us when we're moving through different breathing exercises. You, like I said, you don't need the blocks. The blankets work just fine. I also have um, two bolsters. Now, you might not have these at home. Not a big deal. You can just grab, um, grab a comforter, grab a blanket from your couch, something like that. Um, when I use these, if you don't have something like it, you can take blocks and kind of build your own bolster. It acts the same way. Um, again, this can all be done with just various blankets, pillows that you have at home. So don't feel like, oh, I don't have the props. I, I can't do this. You absolutely, absolutely can. So the most important things in yin is that we're going to come into a position. We'll hold it for a particular length of time. And then you're going to resolve to remain as still as possible. And I will tell you, I normally time each pose. That's part of it, so that we're staying in it for um, the same length of time or not too long. I am filming with my iPhone, so I don't have my timer next to me. So just bear with me. Um, I'll, I'll be breathing uh, through it with you. And we'll just move kind of at a time when it feels right. So, like I said, right now, I am sitting up on this block. I just want to show you. Do you see how I'm kind of like off the, off the front of it? I'm not just sitting flat on top of it, because that would be the same as sitting flat on the ground, and we don't want that. So you want to be a little bit um, forward on your block when you're sitting. And Leela's just going to hang out with us. So, you know, it's all good. I'm just setting us up for um, some centering, just getting in touch with the breath and coming into the moment. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to roll up this blanket, place it down, and I can get that same, um, that same feeling where the hips are higher than the knees, and I'm able to get that length in the spine. Without it, if I'm just sitting flat, I tend to round. I think a lot of us do. And I am someone who has a significant back injury from 20-some years ago. And um, without 
um, a prop to help me sit properly, it's really uncomfortable. So allow yourself to get comfortable on uh, either your rolled blanket or a little forward on a block. And I will say this is a little different for me. Usually I am not practicing along with you when I am teaching in class. So I'm going to let you get comfortable right now and just get in that seated position. And as you're seated here, ground down through your bum. And as you do, get tall through the spine. If you feel like your chin's starting to come up, draw the chin down and let the length come from the back of the head. So it's like the top of the head is drawing upward. And as you're getting comfortable in that position, begin to notice your breath. You don't have to control it just yet. Just notice how the breath feels moving in and out of the nostrils. Just noticing that sensation. And while you're noticing that, I need to let my other dog out. And I can't believe I'm saying this. So just stay with your breath for a moment. Okay, no, 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 go. Sorry about that. Let's just hope, hey, you too. <laughs> this is not how I planned class. Okay, let's just hope that these two behave behind me. That's all I gotta say, okay? <sighs> okay, coming into this moment, feeling the breath, maybe noticing the temperature of the air around you in the room, or if you're outside, Noticing the sensation of the warmth of the sun. Notice the breeze or the temperature of the air in the room. <laughs> Notice any sounds around you or any dogs that you just really wish would not be barking. But what can you do? <laughs> this is life, right? Sometimes I'd like to be in this, you know, cave alone in silence practicing yoga, but that's just not real life. It's really just barking dogs and lawnmowers and God knows what else. So as you ground down through the bum here and you get tall through the spine, again, Feeling that length through the top of the head, keeping the chin drawn gently down. Begin to stretch out the breath. So you might envision that as you're breathing in, two, three, four, we're tracing like around this imaginary circle, out, two, three, four, you might even extend, five, six, breathing in, two, Three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six. Breathing in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six. So keep breathing in a way that feels right to you. If you're breathing in for four, let your exhale match it or extend a little bit more. When you extend the exhale just a little bit more, it helps to stimulate that relaxation response. So just do what feels right to you. We wanted to shift from that unconscious breath of shallow breaths in and out which inadvertently helps keep us in that sympathetic, you know, fight flight nervous system response. Or actually at this point, we're all in what, week three of this uh, stay at home order. You might even notice a third aspect to 
the nervous system response of this freeze response, which looks like maybe avoidance right now. Maybe you feel like some days you just can't even do one thing. You know, being productive seems almost ridiculous at this point, right? And that is a exaggerated form of a, a parasympathetic response where you're completely frozen. But alas, we'll talk about that another time. Take one more deep breath in here and out. Now, from this place, you might place your attention in between the eyes, this space of inner knowing, and maybe just ask yourself, what do I really need right now? As you set an intention today, you know, you might have something on your mind. Maybe you really need some more patience. Maybe you really need a little bit of uh, kindness toward yourself. And whatever that might be. And if nothing's coming to mind, just let the question be the intention. What do I really need right now? Take a deep breath in. and out. Noticing how you can find calm amidst some craziness, right? Uh, okay, they're like my additional children, you know? Okay, so if you have a blanket that you're using that's um, rolled up, be s sitting on that still. You could also be using um, a block, whatever feels right to you. If you don't have a block, you can um, use uh, pillows or something like that. So the first pose will be a butterfly position. Let your feet, um, soles of the feet come together and have the heels a little further away from the groin. If you notice that you're pulling in real tight, have them extend out just a little bit. And you might place some um, blocks or pillows here if this um, is too tight for you, place those blocks here so that you're nice and comfortable. Yin is all about yielding and letting go. There is no forcefulness here. There is no really pushing yourself to get deep into a stretch. This is all about letting go. If you find that um, this position feels uncomfortable to you as well, you can always extend roll a blanket across your lap. You could take another pillow and have it here as a um, gentle assist as you fold forward because when you do you're gently pressing down. You could have the bolster or pillow from home here as you fold forward so that you're completely rested or you can even Place a block between your feet. Have the bolster or pillow pressed here. And as you fold forward, be resting your forehead here against this bolster. Again, I know you might not have that um, in front of you, so just use a, a pillow or something that um, might feel good to you. For the sake of this, I will I'll place this here just so we can see each other a little bit better. Take a deep breath in, get long through the spine, and as you exhale, fold forward. You might let the hands be palms up. You want to let the head hang completely. And connect back in with that breath. Breathing in for that count of four, maybe five. Exhaling for that same four, maybe five.
Notice as you inhale where you feel any tension in the legs here. And as you exhale, envision that you could send the breath to those areas and let them soften. Staying rounded over. Again, letting gravity do the work. I'll show you by moving this out of the way. As you're rounded forward, and without the props, this is a lot deeper here. Allow the knees to gently be drawn down toward the ground. And just let the head hang. And you'll notice a deeper sensation on the outside of the thighs. Again, breathing in and noticing Are you serious? <laughs> and exhaling. <laughs> and as you're breathing, I'm wondering how no one in my family is seeing these dogs act crazy. Stay with your breath here, breathe in and out. Just a couple more breaths here. And on your next breath in, slowly make your way back up to your seat. I'm fairly certain that um, we've never had this much distraction in regular class, but you know what? Um, here we are. <laughs> so sorry about that. <coughs> okay. After every position, we want to have some type of um, counter pose. So you're just going to reach your arms back behind you. <coughs> Have your feet out in front of you and just gently windshield wiper the legs side to side. So the feet are about hip distance apart. And you're just letting the knees drop side to side, just getting that stretch in here. Now, the next pose will be a straddle um, pose here. So have the heels as far apart as feels right to you. Again, you want to make sure you're on that um, the blanket or the block on that angle. Now, we're going to fold forward, have the palms face up. I'm going to show you what I think is the most comfortable thing to do here. So we have a, um, a block here and just building that support with the... Um, the bolster. So you can build up your pillows so that you're able to lean forward and feel that stretch and still be able to rest your chin down here. Maybe it's the top of your head. So for instance, maybe it's standing up like this. Again, let the palms be face up when possible because it, if your hands are down, you might find yourself resist or um, not resisting, wanting to reach forward. I can't think of the word for some reason. So when you turn your palms face up, you're more in the mindset of receiving and just allowing everything to be just as it is. So as you're rounding forward here, if this is too much of a deep stretch here, I'll lower 
this down just so you can see. You can take a blanket, roll it up, or a pillow or something, have it underneath this leg so that it's raising up the floor for you, okay? And you can do that on both sides. That creates a significant sense of ease um, because this is a deep hamstring stretch. So do whatever feels right for you and then reconnect with the breath. Connecting back with that circular breath where we're breathing in for four, maybe five, and out. Noticing the areas where you're feeling this tightness along the back side of the legs. And when you exhale, letting the breath go directly to those areas that really need that letting go. Breathing in and out. Noticing if you're tightening up through the kneecaps here, just gently let go. Releasing any tension you've been holding on to. This practice is all about coming back to, again and again, coming back to that awareness of the breath and the body. So even as I'm talking to you, this left leg has been tightening up and it's like my kneecaps drawn up real high. Relax and let it go. And the more we notice when we have those moments of holding on and tightening in the body, the better you get at noticing it throughout your regular life. So we practice it here on the mat, but really the goal is not to just always be on a yoga mat. The goal is to be out in traffic or at work or dealing with the kids or just moving through the roller coaster of this whole situation. Noticing those times when you're holding on and being aware enough to say, okay, I need to take a minute. Let me just take a couple deep breaths and slowly let that go. Because when you're able to settle your breath and you're able to relax your body, you're able to settle your mind in a new way too. So when you're ready, gently walk your hands back so that you're sitting up again. Bend the knees so that the hips, or the heels are hip distance apart. And again, we're just gonna windshield wiper side to side. Now, this is going to be a two-part, excuse me, two-part pose. Um, we're going to first take the right leg and cross it over the left leg that's going to stay extended. Notice I'm still up on that uh, rolled blanket or using the block beneath me, whatever feels right to you. Okay, so automatically, I feel that deep stretch across the back of my left leg <clears throat> and the, the one that's extended. If that feels too strong for you, take a blanket, scoot it under here, and I instantly get relief from that. So know that if you've ever gone to a class and you felt really uncomfortable in the poses and stuff, there are so many ways to support you through poses. I don't want you to give up. So there's always a there's always a way to adjust. If your foot doesn't want to come all the way back toward the left hip, then have it be here. And if that doesn't work, have it be here. And if that doesn't work, have it be here. Or maybe you're going to have it like a seated tree type pose. That's fine too. 
the pose of uh, shoelace begins like this, but it can look however it needs to in your body. There's not a one size fits all. Again, we're gonna get long through the spine here. And as you exhale, it's that rounding forward and letting go. So again, you wanna be as comfortable as possible. You can have the blanket here. You can use that bolster again, standing up. Okay. Wherever you are in this pose, find what feels comfortable to you and then reconnect with the breath. I'll keep the bolster here, kind of supporting my head. I was a swimmer my whole life. Um, swam competitively for most of my young and teenage years and my hamstrings are the tightest thing you ever met in your life probably always will be. I feel like my muscles were trained to do one thing and that was swim. So I feel that um, support of the blanket here but I'm also still getting a really deep stretch through that extended leg. And as you stay here remember we're smoothing out that breath. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, maybe five. Keep evening out the breath. Breathing a little deeper than that typical unconscious breath. Now as we, we're still staying in this pose here, as we move through uh, different poses, you're stimulating different meridian lines in the body. So if you envision that the body is covered in this invisible roadmap of energy pathways, okay, and every breath you take, it's just moving through all these pathways in the body it's connecting organs in the body with different systems in the body and they all begin and end in our fingers and toes. So anytime we do any kind of twisting motion or we have the knees bent, we're really stimulating the gallbladder meridian line. And if you can envision that it starts on the outside of the eye, travels around the ear, down the neck, over the shoulder, and then it tracks down the side body and right before it gets um, all the way down to the hip it does this little zigzag across the low back comes back out to the hip and then travels down the outside of the leg following your IT band all the way down to the toes and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute so on your next breath in come on back up to your seat this um, blanket out to the side for a minute. I'm going to cross my legs here and I'm going to come forward. Now we're going to uh, step forward into something called uh, a winged dragon. So I'm going to sit back for a minute just to explain. You'll want to have a bolster or your blanket or excuse me your pillows nearby or maybe your um, pillows and an extra blanket, something like that. Um, the blocks can also be uh, helpful here. So for wing dragon, we're going to start in a tabletop position and that same right foot we used before, step it forward. Okay. Then take your hands inside and I'm hoping you can still see me in this shot. I guess we'll find out later. Your hands are inside of the right foot. So I'm going to kind of wiggle walk this right foot out a little bit to the side and come onto the outside edge of the foot so that you're kind of opening up into this hip. Okay. Now, 
this can be a really deep um, stretch into the hip and it might not feel super comfortable to you. So you can be here resting on this bolster or you can just keep building it up, right? Until it feels like something more comfortable for you. Okay, this takes a lot of stress out. This long leg behind me, my left leg, I have that wiggle walked out so that my left leg is straight out. And maybe as we're here in the pose, I'll turn so that you can see it from a different angle. So we're on that outside edge of the foot, as deep into the hip as feels right to you. And then connect back in with the breath. You're gonna feel a deep stretch at the top of the left hip here, down the front side of the leg. You're gonna feel a deep stretch in through the right leg as well. And as you stay here, I'll turn to just give a side view here so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you're feeling a little bit not sure here from tabletop, step the right foot through, back leg extends, hands are inside of the right foot, Come on to that outside edge of the right foot, and we're here. Now, maybe this feels really good to you, and you want to come down here. That's fine. If not, you can be here. If you'd like to be more supported, again, you can use those bolsters. As with all the poses, you want to make sure that you're not going any deeper than you need to. So notice what feels right for you. And you come into the position until you feel just enough of a stretch. If you're forcing something, you're going to end up hurting yourself and I do not want you to do that. This is all about finding that place between, you know, striving too hard and not feeling anything at all. So just find that place where it's just enough. Notice if you've connected with the breath here. Or if the pose has been a little difficult, have you kind of forgotten about the breath? Tune into that now. Take a deep breath in. Two three, four, and out, two, three, four, maybe five. One more round of breathing here. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Flip the back toes. Kind of gives you a little bend in the knee here. Step that knee back. I like to take a child's pose here. Let the knees come to the width of your mat. Sit back towards your bum and then extend forward. So if you have those pillows or a bolster, this is a very uh, comfortable way to experience child's pose. Tuning into the breath again here. Just make sure that your head is supported when you're forward in this pose. Also, if you have the forehead pressed into your pillow here or the earth beneath you, whatever you're working with here, you can rock your forehead side to side. This is a very psychologically soothing pose. Take another deep breath in here and out. 
breath in and out. Slowly walk your hands back so that you're coming up to a seat. We're going to come back to center here. I'm going to re-roll my blanket. Okay. This time the right leg is long and the left leg is coming on top. So remember, I'm drawing that right foot now, excuse me, my left foot over to my right hip. So I have that deep stretch on the long leg. Remember, you can take your blanket or a small pillow, put it underneath the leg here to support and help support the knee as well. And remember, like, don't beat yourself up if your foot doesn't come back here. It's really not a big deal. It can be here, 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 whatever feels right to you. <clears throat> Get long through the spine here. Take a deep breath in. You can extend the arms up if you want, or you can just have the arms here. Slowly round forward. So we're rounding with the spine. If this was vinyasa and we were stretching forward, we would be really reaching but we're not doing that here. Yin is the opposite, right? There is that the fiery side of things and there's the moon side of things. Don't let the dogs out. I'm recording. <laughs> so having the bolster here this can be a nice, restful way to experience this pose. If you have blankets, you know, a couch cushion would be really good for this. Taking a deep breath in and out. Again, as you breathe in, just noticing where you're experiencing that tightness. And as you exhale, Sending the breath right to those spaces. And continuing to breathe slow, controlled breaths. Now remember, you know, we talked about the, the meridians a little bit. Now with the left side doing what we did on the right, that gallbladder meridian, when uh, there's a blockage energetically in that pathway, <clears throat> you might end up seeing it show itself in different ways. You know how our body just is always talking to us, giving us these little hints like, hey, you might want to pay attention to this. I think you're going to get sick or, you know, there's something going on. With the gallbladder meridian line, you know because maybe you start getting frequent eye infections or maybe your eyes are super watery or maybe they are really dry. Sometimes when we do a lot of gallbladder meridian um, poses that stimulate that meridian line, it's really interesting to see this all of a sudden like burst of tears and the person's like I'm not even I'm not sad what the heck is going on it's just this release through that meridian line so you might notice after this practice or even right now your eyes could get a little bit watery it's just a sign that there's been some energetic movement in the body You know, you've ever had a massage and someone's rubbing your neck and you feel this tinge in your toes or something? Like that's happening for a reason, right? Take another deep breath in here. And out. On your next breath in, walk the hands back, uncross the legs. You can windshield wiper here if you want. Just a couple times. We're going to cross the legs here. 
come forward into that tabletop position again. Now, you know what we did on the other side, so we're going to do it on this side too. I'm going to step that left foot forward. Now, instantly, my right knee is talking to me and saying, please put something under your knee. So you can scoot your blanket underneath your knee to help support it a little bit here. You're going to wiggle walk that left foot out. Again, you can stay here, but we're going to come out onto that outside edge of the left foot and sink into that here. You can come down like this and start connecting to the breath. Or if that feels too much, you can use your bolster. Just find that space that feels right to you. Finding that space here between effort and ease, okay? And while we remain as still as possible in the pose, if you feel any kind of tingling or anything, any time that just feels not quite right, please, by all means, come out of the pose. This is not about pushing yourself to the limit here. This is about really finding that ease. So reconnecting with the breath here. Slowly breathing in for that count of four or five. And slowly breathing out. Noticing where you're holding on here and just letting every single cell just let go. Noticing if your breathing is a little more difficult to stay with when you're in a pose that's a little more stressful like this. Where does your mind go when you're in a more stressful position? Can you still maintain that ease of the breath when things are a little more difficult? On your next breath in, Slowly begin to walk the hands back. I have my back toes flipped here. I'm going to take my knees to the width of my blanket here and sit back. Remember, we're going to do that child's pose. So I have the bolster here. You could use their pillows or couch cushion. Come forward. You could stack the fists if you like here. You could have a block here and have the head pressed in. Whatever feels right to you. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Breathing in and noticing any of those spaces where you feel tension in the body and exhaling, letting every single cell just let go and relax. A couple more breaths here. And your next breath in slowly. Walk your hands back. Now, this pose, if you've ever taken a uh, fiery vinyasa class, <laughs> you've tried this. It's called half pigeon. This one is going to be. Um, 
again, it's a deep hip opener, but um, I think it feels good. So come forward in that tabletop position. Step the right foot forward and then wiggle walk it across to the top of your mat. Now, you might find that you end up bending completely so that the heel is underneath the groin as we fold forward. You can see what feels right to you. Taking a deep breath in here. And then as you exhale, walk your hands forward. Again, your heel right now might be under the groin. It might be underneath the left hip. See what feels right to you. I can take a block or a pillow and place it under the right bum. You can also take some blankets folded up right now or a bolster and use that as support. Gets deep into the right hip, the right bum, the hamstring. Just a couple breaths here. Usually we'd stay here a little bit longer, but for today, just a quick visit for that pose. Flip your back, toes, and step that right knee back. You can kind of sit back for a minute, stretch through the back, open up the shoulders here, bring the hands forward. And we're going to step that left foot forward and then wiggle over to wherever feels right to you. So you might have your left foot parallel up here. And if you do, like, that's great. Mine's just not going to do that. So have it underneath the groin if need be. Maybe have it underneath the right hip right now, wherever feels right for you. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, sink down to a place that feels right for you. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. I will tell you that this is a pose that you could stay in for your left and right side, a solid five minutes each side. You're getting that nice deep stretch through the leg that's bent. Again, we're stimulating that gallbladder meridian line again. Slowly connecting to the breath. And this is another one of those really deep poses that might elicit that emotional response I talked about where the longer you're here and you really focus on slowing down and stretching out the breath, the more that comes to the surface. And honestly, you just need to let that happen. I don't care if you're, you know, this major, I don't know, CrossFit, Ironman workout guy, you know, total badass or something. You can still melt in this pose, trust me. Take another deep breath in, and as you do, walk the hands back. Flip the toes of the right foot. That helps you kind of get a little bit of space to bring that knee back. Take a deep breath in here. And out. Okay. It 
looks like it might rain on me, so I'm going to um, speed us up a little bit. So coming on to a seat, you want to remove any um, blanket that was underneath of you before. Okay. Have your feet pressed into the floor. Have your hands extended out. If you have a strap, have it nearby. We'll do a, I'll show you quickly what I would do for a longer amount of time based on the cloud cover where it's going to be a little faster. Oh. My microphone needs to get moved. Okay. All right. So here we are. You might draw your knees into your chest here. Kind of rock side to side, massaging the spine. Take that strap if you have it, or your belt, or the tie from your robe, whatever you might have. Put it around the, the right foot. And I put it around like the pad of the right foot here. <clears throat> Extend that leg long. Now, if the leg long means being here, then have it be here. If it's here, great. If it's further back, then that's fantastic. You're like a super bendy person, which I am definitely not. So, have it in a place that feels right to you. <clears throat> I like to keep this left uh, leg bent. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, Open up through that right leg. You're going to get a nice deep stretch here. Remember, we're only going as deep as feels good to you, where you feel just enough. And I am just, the only reason I'm moving faster is because now I can feel the rain, okay? So my, I'm going to lower that left leg down, but I'm keeping it bent. And I'm dragging not dragging, drawing that right foot across the body. If you like, you can reach down and grab a hold of that left foot that's bent now. Ah, yes, the rain is coming. Okay. <laughs> Speed up version. Switch legs. Again, that left leg comes open. That feels really, really good. And the rain doesn't feel bad. It's kind of nice sort of drawing it across the body now now drop that right knee keep it bent if it feels right you can reach back and grab hold of that this is called cat pulling its tail if not just let the foot be bent anywhere that feels right it's raining a little harder now <laughs> okay so here's what I would do to finish up Take, a, take your time with that. Have your knees drawn into your chest. For a reclining twist, you would drop the knees over to the right side. Okay. Have the arms extended with the knees to the right side. Gaze comes over the left shoulder. I would stay here for at least five to ten breaths. Knees over to the left side. Gaze comes over the right shoulder, okay? And just notice what feels right for you. You might be like using a bolster here or a blanket to kind of let yourself feel as comfortable as possible and really get a nice deep twist. Then I would let myself lay here for <laughs> a little bit. Um, outside, two things to worry about. One rain which is happening right now to where i live turkey buzzards if you lie down out here and you close your eyes for too long don't be surprised when the turkey buzzards are hitting their wings on the trees because they're circling so low to come have a little feast on you so um, when you're doing this in your own practice give yourself the time to breathe through those last few stretches and um, give yourself at least five minutes in what we call Shavasana, that final pose, where your arms are outstretched, palms are faced up, the heels are far apart from each other, maybe have something to cover across the eyes to let you, um, to let you get the most uh, 
sensory deprivation happening here so you can really sink into your breath and just be in the moment. I hope you enjoyed that um, really unconventional yin practice and I'm now seriously getting rained on. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope you found that practice to be helpful. So um, at the end of all my practices I always give some kind of uh, closing and I hope you found this to be uh, something that you feel really good about the rest of your day and carries you on through um, the rest of your week even. And the light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you.